Let's try long wave. Down to the start. What was effectively done to Pakistan lost the last six wickets for 40 runs. And that opened the door for us just a little. Very good. We put together six. To be honest, I mean, I've just had a hacker on the bench just now. And it's, it's picking up more stations than that one did. Um, that's performing really good. I'm pleased with that. Right. FM then. Or I can't remember what the German pronunciation is now. So I'm going to need to hook um, a wire up for this because unfortunately he's broke. So, so far so good. Let's have a look. UKW FM. Let's start him over. Start him at the lower end of the band. Looks like it goes, it doesn't go very high. <laughs> Looks like it goes up to about 102 possibly. That's about 88 to 102. There is no FM. We have no FM. Could be a dirty switch. More than likely. Put the light on. Yeah, these have got these little, like, I can't remember what you called it, like wafer switches on them. Let me get you in there a bit closer. There we are. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so here, this is the switches. Um, where are we? To go this way for that switch. So this is the FM switch. You probably see these a little bit better. But yeah, these look fairly clean. The FM one looks pretty dirty, so let's give that a little squirt. Right. We don't need the lights off actually for uh, FM. Let's try that again. Totally dead on FM. Totally dead on FM for some reason. Now it looks like there is a separate module for FM. Got some screws in there. Do with the tuning gang. I expect this one will have to come off. Ugh, don't break.
Literally just brute force and ignorance. Let's go all doctor on it and get the uh, forceps in. Trash the iPad while you're at it. Right. Well, that's the scary bit done. Now see if we can get in and um, undo, it looks like a mass of screws in here. Those of you that have taken these apart before are probably screaming at me because there's literally probably two screws and it'll fall out. Can't see it, but you never know. Looks like we're in business. So we've got one more holding it in somewhere. Where are you? Well, there is a single screw up in there. Would it be that one? I wonder. Bear with me, this is boring. Well, I think the fight is over. Oh dear me. What a devil to get out of the case. Cool. But it's out. A little board there with a separate coil in it, so I'm not going to mess with that at this stage. Very well made little radio. Very, very well made. You can just feel it. <laughs> you can see all the components it's got in here. Certainly have um, maxed it out. It's got that FM module out there as well. that as the FM aerial this time.
Okay, well I've just seen something broken, which um, may or may not be something to do with that, and that's this. Okay, just here, looks like this has pulled out of the some sort of insulated washer there, so I don't think it was connected to this case, I think it was just an anchor point, unless something was connected on the back of it. I need to look at the schematic for that, but um, yeah, that definitely looks like it was sat in there at one stage. The hot glue gun that back in there. So far, that's the only thing I found. Can't see anything else untoward, say, unless one of these. Um... Actually, no, there's a transistor there. Ah, there we are. There they are. Ah. Could be those transistors. It'll tell me which lead is which anyway. If it reads it as a transistor, that is. Okay, so it's sent as a Zener diode. That's more than likely because it's still in circuit. Now it's saying no component. Let's grab onto these. No component. Let's try this one. You can actually hear that crackling in the speaker as I'm testing it. No component found. Okay, back on the Normand. Normand. Not really sure which. I have found an issue on the FM board, which I think is what's causing the FM to not work. And that is this little transistor back here. I have already desoldered it. I tested it in circuit and it was showing uh, as a diode. So gave it the benefit of the doubt, took it out of circuit, which still still shown as a diode, so something's not right with it. Uh, one of the junctions is gone. It's an OC615, which um, I've got none of them. I've had a search around. In towers, they say an equivalent's uh, an AF124. So I thought, okay, AF124. What's an equivalent to AF124? Because I have got some AF124s, but do I want to use them in this set just to see if it get going? I thought, ah, what about our Russian transistors? GT322B. So uh, that is what I'm going to pop in there. So what I'll do is I'll solder those two legs first. I'll solder the uh, basin emitter. Then I've got to stretch the collector across to that centre part, which will be tricky. I'm going to flux these because this is old um, Russian germaniums.
OC615, not seen one of them before, I must admit. Right, that's the first two soldered. Russian friend. A big stretch. So the original one was bent in underneath like this, so we'll do the same with this one. Make sure it's not uh, touching against anything. See if I can blob a bit of solder in there. It's a bit of a sort of a junction between a lot of different things here. Hopefully. Yeah, it looks like that's got it. Right, let's get some power on it. See if my little Russian friend has done the trick. So aerial, we'll go with there. Power. So you've got good gain these transistors, so they should be okay. I'm trying to remember where the volume, oh the volume's, where's the volume? Job done. Our little German's working. Piece composed by Paul Lewis called the Festival of London March, and the composer conducting the Academy of St Martin in the Fields. So look, there's now less than quarter of an hour to go before we. sensitive. Newton Abbott Tone Band, and that's where he met Pamela Richards. Our Tone, along with her father, who played the bass, 
bass trombone and Christine was born. They got married in 1957 and had four sons, two of whom still keep up the family tradition. A well-known player indeed, Philip, once a member of the Hanwell Bands, now playing with Roche Brass. Well, I'm pleased it's working. Excellent. There we go. Sorted. <laughs> ah, dear. Yeah, that was some um, little bit of head scratch. It didn't take long to get to that there. So I just need to check out some of these capacitors, have a look through the electrolytics and then uh, this one will be going back together I think, a bit of a clean up and then decide what to do with it and change, check some of these electrolytics, there's not many in here actually digging in underneath that speaker there so yeah, good job, thanks for watching ok well that pretty much concludes this uh, little Normand transistor for now. Um, it's quite quite an extensive um, refurb needed on that one. So uh, at the moment that one's going to be put on the back burner because I've got a few more bits and pieces I need to do. So what I'm going to do is put this one back together and um, move on to the next one. Thanks for watching this one. If you like it, again, give me a thumbs up. As I say, a working radio.